How's it going guys? In today's video, we're going to be looking at how we can create local notifications on iOS using SwiftUI. And to get started, I've created this app, which allows us to schedule a notification in five seconds from now or on a fixed date. So I'm gonna be showing you how we can do that. So to get started, let's go ahead and use the one that's in five seconds. We click on that, close the app, and in five seconds, we should get a notification that says, you can write more in here it's a five second notification. But now let's go ahead and pretend we want to see what's happening in a few minutes from now, such as at minute 53, which should be in about 30 seconds from this moment. We will schedule the notification and close the app. Now you will notice up here, it will say 1552. And as soon as it's 1553, it's going to trigger the notification and it's going to wake up the device and tell us we got a notification. And there we go. We get a notification that says date based notification. This notification is a reminder that you added a date. Tap on the notification to see more. So we can tap on it and we can open it and it will take us back to our app. And there's also a chance that we need to request for permissions, which actually it's not a chance. We actually do need to request for permissions every time we create a new app. So I also created that functionality down here but we will see how that works at the end of this tutorial. As soon as we click on request permissions, it's going to tell the user, we might be using some sounds and we might notify you. And essentially that's what's going to happen. But of course, with that being done, let's go ahead and get started immediately in a new Xcode project. So inside here, the first thing we will do is close this sidebar here and change it to an iPhone 13. And then we just want to minimize this and preview it just to make sure that everything's working correctly. Great, so the first thing we should do is go to our folder over here and hold Option Command plus N to create a new group. And the first one is going to hold the views. So the views include the content view, and then we should go ahead and click on this folder again, hold Option Command plus N and create one called Handlers. And inside here, we need to create a new Swift file. So go ahead and right click on the Handler folder and click New File. And inside here, we want to create a Swift file and it's going to be called Notification Handler. Then go ahead and click on Create. Now to actually use the notifications, we need to go ahead and type in Import User Notifications. Then we can go ahead and create a class to make this much more manageable. So Notification Handler is what we will call the class. And the first function we want to specify is the ask for permission function. So here we type in ask permission. And the first thing we should type in here is a UN user notification center dot current dot request authorization. And we need to specify the options. So as the options, we're going to create an array of dot alert dot badge and dot sound. And as the completion handler, we can actually remove this one right here and create a closure. So what we want to get back is the success, spelled like that, and the error in this block of code. So if it is a success, of course, we want to tell the user that they have the permission granted, or it's much easier for us to log that. So we'll just go ahead and say access granted. Else, if there's an error, so if let error equal the error, then we can go ahead and type in print error dot localized description. So it will just let us know what went wrong here. Okay, so this function will take care of asking for the permissions necessary to display a notification. Now we need to create the functions that are actually going to send the notifications. So right below this function, we can go ahead and type in function send notification. And to customize this, I went ahead and created a few parameters. The first one being a date of type date, followed by a type of type string, a time interval of type double, which will initially be set to 10, and a title of type string, followed by the body of type string. Then we can go ahead and create a block. And the first thing we have to do inside here is actually create a trigger. So let's go ahead and type in var trigger, which will equal a UN notification trigger. And we have to add a question mark in case this is nil, even though we know it's not going to be nil. 
So now we need to go ahead and specify whether this should be time-based. So if we say we want this to be executed in 10 seconds, that's going to be one way to create a trigger. Otherwise, we can create a very specific date and time. So we're just going to create an if else statement that will handle this. So if the type is equal to date, then we want to handle, of course, the date trigger. So here we need to type in let date components equal calendar.current dot date components and we want all of the components so dot day dot month dot year dot hour and dot minute like that and all of this is going to come from the date we have specified up here now we need to create the trigger so the trigger is going to be assigned to this value so the trigger will be un calendar notification trigger and it's going to depend on the date matching. So date matching is going to be set to the date components. And we're going to set repeats to false. Otherwise, down here we'll type in else if the type is equal to time, we'll go ahead and create a different kind of trigger. So trigger is going to equal un time interval notification trigger. And the time interval is going to be set to the time interval. So if you type in 10, it's going to trigger the notification in 10 seconds from the point that you initiate this call. And we will also set this to false. And up until now, we've been dealing with a few errors. And that's because here I tried to assign this, which doesn't make any sense. It's just supposed to be the type of the trigger. So if we add that and rerun the program, it should be back to normal and the program might complain that we cannot assign this to the UN notification trigger, but that's not the case. Just go ahead and run the program and everything should compile nicely. So finally, we can move on to actually addressing the content we want for the notification. So here we can go ahead and type in let content equal a UN mutable notification content. Now we can go ahead and modify things such as the title which is going to be set to the title, then the content dot body, which will be set to the body. And also we need to go ahead and modify the content dot sound, which will be set to the UN notification sound dot default. Now, what's also important is that we actually make the request. So here we can go ahead and create a variable called request, and that's going to equal a UN notification request which is going to take an identifier. So go ahead and type in identifier, content, and the trigger. So for the identifier, we need to make up a UUID. And in case you don't really care what happens, you can just make it over here and type in UUID and UUID string. If you do care, go ahead and make it somewhere else and keep track of it because you can use that later to delete requests in case you have to. The content is going to be set to the content. And the trigger, of course, is going to be set to the trigger. Then, of course, we need to go ahead and type in un user notification center dot current. Then we need to go ahead and call add and insert the request. So request. Now let's go ahead and run the program just to make sure that it still compiles. Perfect. So it says hello world but now we're just missing the UI we need to actually make everything work in the notification center. So let's go back to Xcode and inside here, we're going to go ahead and click on the view folder and click on content view, because now we need to go ahead and try to build our app. So we can actually close the sidebar because it's irrelevant now, and we can add a few variables. The first one is going to be add state, private var selected date, which will be set to a new date. Then we need to go ahead and create a reference to our class. So let notify, which will be the name, equal notification handler. And we need to initialize this. So remember to add the parentheses. Now we can go ahead and get started with the easy part, which is just creating the UI. So as always, we're going to get rid of the text and add a V stack. And inside here, I want to specify the spacing to be set to 20. Now, the first thing we will add is a spacer, or actually two spacers, so that we can push things to the top and to the bottom. 
Now the first and most important button we need to make this work is the request permissions button. So at the bottom, we'll go ahead and type in button and here we'll say request permissions. And as the code we want to execute, we just type in notify and type in ask permission. It's that simple now that we actually created the class that handles all of this for us. And above that, I just want to make this app look nice. So I'll type in text, not working, a question mark. And we need to add some modifiers such as foreground color and set that to dot gray, followed by italic. So if we go ahead and preview this, we should get that at the bottom that tells us that we can request new permissions. Let's make this a bit smaller. But now let's go ahead and create the other two buttons. So the other button is going to be between the spaces, just like a sandwich. And we're going to type in button, send a notification in five seconds. Then we can go inside here and type in notify dot send notification. And you'll see all of these parameters that we should specify. So since this is a time interval for the date, we're just going to add a random date. As the type, we need to specify that this is time. So we will type in time. As a time interval, we can go ahead and type in five seconds, 10 seconds, as many seconds as you want. As a title, we'll just say, hey there. And in the body, we'll type in, this is a reminder you set five seconds ago. And that's all we need to include to make this work. And something that I like to do that just makes it seem a little bit cleaner is just move these down next to each other, especially when it's such a big class such as this one. It just makes it a bit easier for me to read if I have them in this kind of order. Now, I know you're very excited to see if this works. So go ahead and run your program so we can actually test it out and see what we have so far. So here we have the app. And the first thing we should do is request the permissions. It's going to say that your app wants to request these permissions so you can either allow it or not allow it. But of course we should allow it in case we want to make this function. Now we're allowed to go ahead and send a notification. So we will go ahead and click on send a notification, hold command plus L to close the device. And if everything went well, we should get a notification alert. And another thing I should specify is in the previous example, I had a thumbnail over here and this is just going to be what your app looks like. So as soon as you add an app icon, you're going to have a image over here. But since I did not provide it in this video, it's going to be empty and default. But we can click on this and reopen the app. But of course, I want to show you also how we can create the notification that gets triggered on a date. So let's go back to our program and create the UI for that part. So the first thing that's important is that we create a date picker. And also at the bottom of the VStack, I want to add some padding because that will help us a bit. And inside the date picker, we need to go ahead and type in pick a date followed by a selection, which is going to be set to the selected date. And I want it to be in a range that only goes to the future. So it's going to be in the range of this date, which is initialized as soon as the view appears. And it's going to be to any date in the future because it doesn't make sense to set a notification in the past. So with that being done, we can go ahead and create another button called schedule notification. And it will have a modifier of tint dot orange. So now it's starting to look like the app I showed you at the beginning. To make this very simple, we can go ahead and copy this section over here and paste it right inside here. The difference is this time we need to go ahead and instead of initializing a random date, replace it with the selected date. Then as a type, we'll type in date and we do not need to specify a time interval because we will not be using that part. Now you can go ahead and freely edit the title and the body as you want. We can go ahead and write what's up. And inside the body, we can go ahead and type in, this is a reminder that you set up with the date picker. And we can leave it at that. But with this being done, we can go ahead and run the program one more time and actually test it out. So now we have the pick a date section and we're going to go ahead and change this to 23. We're going to schedule the notification and we're going to hold command plus L and wait for the device to wake up as soon as it gets triggered.
and there we are. We have the WhatsApp notification and it says, this is a reminder that you set up with the date picker. So we can click on that and reopen the app. And something that's really cool about this is that we can click on send a notification. We can exit the app and it's going to tell us at any point in time that the app notification should be activated. So you can even close your app and it will still work. But with that being said, guys, I've gone ahead and included the source code in the description box down below, just in case you get stuck at some part, you're more than welcome to copy that and use it in your own projects. But with that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.